Hi, and welcome to DCO Graphics Studio. In today's video, we'll be going over how to create some basic parametric walls. This exercise is going to be perfect for uh, beginners, and it's going to go over creating basic parametric walls just using offsets and extrusions. So let's get started by kind of creating a polyline that's going to represent the outside face of our building. So first thing is let's take a look at the units. And I'm using feet. Decimal is fine. I feet and inches it's, it's okay too. That doesn't really matter too much uh, here. Now that I have it in feet, I do want to make sure that the line that I'm drawing is big enough. So I'll start by clicking once and then typing in, you know, 30 feet. This way I can kind of know how big 30 feet is and I can just draw just a random polyline. And then here at the end, instead of closing it, I do C enter just to make sure that it closes off. And now that I've kind of created a polyline that is big enough to kind of show you how this is going to work. Basically with this polyline, this is all we're going to need to create some basic exterior walls. Um, with this, what we're going to need to do is bring this inside of Grasshopper. So we'll double click here and go to a curve component. Now that we have this curve component, we can right click on it and go to set one curve. Now that we've set that curve, we can actually just select this and either hide it by typing in hide, control H to hide, or you can do, I think, command H if you're on a Mac. With this curve already brought into uh, Grasshopper and it being hidden, you're going to notice that you can't really select it. And that's because when you have it inside of Grasshopper, it's not necessarily an object that is finished. Uh, and you can always bring back the original to kind of change the the baseline, but it's what it what it, this is showing is that you we brought it into Grasshopper, and now we can kind of work with it parametrically, so we won't be able to select it until we bake it. So now that we have this, let's double click here and go to an offset curve, and I'll take this curve and I'll click plug that into the curve here, and it's going to offset to the outside now. If I don't want it to offset to the outside, I need to offset it the opposite direction, which means there's there are different ways of doing this. What I like to do is go here to, let's say, two feet or two. And this is going to give me a slider from zero to 10, and it's going to put it at two. And then the distance, we're going to plug in a negative into the distance. So I'll double click here and go to negative. And I'll do two, which is the input. Then it outputs as negative two, which then offsets it to the inside. Now this is two feet. Let's say you wanted to do six inches. This gets a little bit more, um, a little bit more technical, but I think it's important to to know that you can also change your units inside of Grasshopper. So now that, as you can see, we have two. Well, let's say you want to do, instead of six feet, you want to do six inches. Well, if this is in feet, then we know we need to do a multiplication or a division of 12. Six divided by 12.5, which equals to half a foot, which is six inches. So I've technically here, by dividing it by 12, I've taken six inches, six feet and multiplied it or divided it by 12 and turned it into six inches. So this is going to be the wall thickness. And here, so just kind of showing all of the steps here. inches two feet and then here this negative value is going to be to 
opposite direction or flip direction. The other way of doing that is instead of six, we can also bring in a slider of negative six. Oh, it's gonna have to be a slider of six. And then when we double click in here, the minimum, if we do negative six, we technically don't need to use this negative value if I were to plug this into here, right? Because it would be already doing it in the in the opposite direction. So different ways of doing it, whichever one's more comfortable. And then this is going to be our base curve. So base curve, then this is going to be our offset curve. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing selecting it control g to group by default your color is going to be purple i change it to white and then also make that my default color this way i it's pretty neutral for the most part um, now with this we're going to create a surface between these two now let's increase this also so 24 is going to be 24 inches and then here, let's say we'll make it a foot. Now let's take the outside, the inside, and let's bring those together using boundary surface. Then I'll right click here and flatten. And you'll see that when I plug in, before I had flattened it, we had this outside one and this inside one. And since they were both kind of coming in here as two separate curves, it's creating a surface for each and one of those. But as soon as I flatten it, it kind of brings it in both of them as one. And that's what creates that surface in between those two. So with this surface, we can now take that and extrude it up to create the height. So that's going to be the basics of creating it. So let's go here to extrude surface or extrude and we can plug in this surface into the base and the direction is going to be our unit Z now for the factor we can plug in the wall height so whether you want it to be in inches or in feet we'll go here to 12 feet so I'll just bring in a slider of 12 and then change this slider name by right clicking on it and changing the name to wall height. So why do I bring in a unit Z? Because when you extrude something, it's going to ask you for a direction and the direction that we want to extrude is up to give it a height. So this is the unit Z vector that will group here and we'll call this the extrusion direction. And here for the surface this is going to be our base wall surface. So now that we have this, we can play around a little bit with some of the wall thickness, even the direction by switching this up if you want it to the inside or to the outside. And then wall height also. And now let's bring back our base curve. So let's type in show and let's click around here let's type in show and that'll bring back your base curve now that you have the base curve here we can take that and select those points and just move it around and see that it kind of updates also so that's one of the reasons why I said it's you know the polyline is not as critical because we can always change that 
we can always also create a different polyline. So we can create a circle like this one, set one curve, and as you can see, it also does it to other shapes. So that's one of the cool things about this is the ability to be able to do this to a lot of things and just kind of save save some of your work, save some of your time. And that if you think about it, this is the basics of creating many things, right? We can create, uh, you know, posts, beams, uh, foundations and all kinds of things. Let's shrink this down. The one thing that it does have some limitations is if you lift up this point, it won't work, right? So it's a two dimensional line that it does ask for. But with that being said, let's pretend that you had a floor plan from a client or you had sketched out and you wanted to do a quick 3D model, right? Let's go here and let's say you had a basic, very basic small house design like this. Well, let's take a quick screenshot and let's see if we can bring that in. So in Windows 11, it's uh, shift, then Windows Command S to do a screen cap. Now that I have this on my clipboard, let's see if I have the ability to paste that here. Yeah, so just let me kind of paste it here, which is good, right? Because sometimes I, I don't want to deal with having to go to different programs so then just bring in an image. I'm glad that you can just snip it and put it here. Now that we have this, let's scale this to make it look more realistic. Um, we'll just make this door entry door be four feet or three feet um and then with that we should be fine actually we, yeah we should be fine with that just as a as an example so we'll do scale from this doorway this doorway we'll do three feet and now we'll take this and put that on its own layer so let's go here into rhino mode and we'll put this on its own layer called floor plan. Make sure you have that selected on that layer, change object to layer, and then we'll lock that. This way we're not, you know, we don't select that and move it around. And we can now kind of sketch on top using layer one and change our layer name to outside phase or let's see wall one we'll just call it wall one now let's go to the outside face of this what i'll do is i'll select this to bring in a smart track point this way it kind of guides me down here and I can do C enter to close. Now I can take this and go to set one curve. Let's go here back to grasshopper mode. And let's bring this into this set this base curve. As you can see, it's an entire 18 inch thick wall, which is wouldn't be true. This would be about six, uh, four inches. And then the wall height would be too big for this. Probably around nine, right? But this is how you can do just the outside face of the wall of that, um, for a basic floor plan using Rhino and Grasshopper, right? Using very simple steps. So if you have any questions, if you want to go further into this kind of uh, exploration, uh, make sure to let me know. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.